What's up folks? That little piece of equipment right there is one of the most controversial things to hit the bass and crappie or fishing market in years. Live scope, Garmin live scope, forward facing sonar, Lowrance makes a version, Hummingbird makes a version, whatever you want to call it, however you feel about it, it's a tool and we're going to go out there and look around. I'm going to show you some of the things that I've learned about live scope over the last nine months. Um, it's kind of controversial. There's people that are definitely anti-live scope, but it is your eyes under the water. It showed me, I've learned a lot about fish, fish habitat, fishing cover, fishing structure, all that stuff. And I'm gonna share some of that stuff with you. We're gonna go out in the water, we're gonna look around and I'm gonna let you know my thoughts on it, how it can help your fishing game out on the water. So let's go. <laughs> One of the first things I learned about fish and fish behavior when I got live scope was really how many fish are in an area that you don't know are there until you have that forward facing sonar and you can pan around and look. Right now we're scanning just kind of a main lake flat here and you can see, you know, that looks like a rock or a stump and there's a few maybe fish kind of speckled along the bottom here. There's a little bit of roughage right there, possible fish and stuff, but really not anything that jumps out. We're gonna go up there and put the trolling motor down and pan around. So remember this picture right here, what you're seeing, and then we'll put that live scope down and it's gonna let us know what's actually down there swimming around. That was my northern accent, eh? All right, let's turn on this live scope. Same spot we just stopped at when I was scanning with the side scan and stuff. We'll turn this on. See, boom, just like that. Already, you see a little group of fish down there. It's most likely some crappie down there. We'll just pan this head around. You got fish right there. There's a little fish, you can just see him. He's kind of blending in, but it'll get hot. Right here, you got a couple fish off in the distance. So, I've got this set out at 80 feet. My depth ring is 80 feet, or my forward ring is 80 feet. Here's some fish showing up right here on the graph. You can really see these fish with the side scan. Um, you could kind of see something was down there, but you couldn't really tell exactly what it is. With the forward-facing sonar, you can definitely tell if there's some fish down there on the bottom swimming around. And that's one of the amazing things about this, is how many fish, like right here, that's crazy. Um, that's actually brush pile with some fish in there. But these, this is all going on underneath the water, and you wouldn't really know that until you drop this forward facing sonar and have a look around. And you can go down the bank, just in the, go out in open water, um, just idle around, drop your trolling motor, and look around a little bit. It just gets away from the boat. That's one of the things that I learned right off the bat is just how many fish are in an area that you didn't know existed. It gives you confidence when you're fishing in an area and you're seeing a lot of activity, it gives you confidence to stay there and you can make bait adjustments and stuff. And a lot of times it doesn't work. You know, that's the one of the preconceived notions about live scope is you don't catch a lot of the fish. I mean, the percentage, the hookup ratio is, the percentage of fish that you catch that you see is, is very, very low. Now crappie fishing is different, but I'm talking about bass fishing. There's a lot of fish that you see, most of them just kind of give you the cast base. They just keep on swimming. Another thing that's interesting is to see how long your cast actually is. I mean, a lot of times I set my live scope on a hundred foot, the range on a hundred foot. And a hundred foot is actually a little bit further cast than what I realized. So we're gonna make a cast out here. I just got a, this is just a 3 8 ounce Cumberland Pro jig with a little chunk on there. I got 15 pound test and we're gonna see how far we cast. You know, it's not, you're not casting as far as what you originally thought. and. I was kind of shocked at, at uh, how far I thought I was casting versus how far I really was. So we see a ball of bait there at 40. And I'm going to make this cast out there and try to land right on top of them. You'll see my jig come down here in just a second. Actually, see, I went behind it. So I cast, you know, 55, 60 feet on that. There's my jig falling to the bottom. You see a fish kind of just appeared out of nowhere. So that's something that is good for boat control. It's fun to practice your, your casting and try to drop it right on a fish. Like I mentioned earlier, most of the time the fish don't bite. 
I mean, there, there are days when you, it really, it depends on how disciplined you are. If you just go out for eight hours, you're going to get a certain amount of fish to bite, but there's also so many fish that do not bite, but it's fun just practicing your casting. Even on a day, you know, maybe the, the fishing's not that good. You can go out there and just kind of practice your casting. Like, so right there, there's a, there's a little baby fish right out there about 40. So you just practice casting it right on his, try to cast it right on his head. See how overcast. Yep, I went a little bit too far. So that fish is not gonna swim over that far. And well, that's just a baby fish anyway, but if that was a big bass, he's not gonna swim over that far. I see a fish out here on the bottom at 70. So we're gonna try to get this bait out there about 70. Where'd he go? They move. It's another thing that I really noticed about the fish behavior is these fish are moving all the time. You know, they're, I don't wanna say all the time, but there's a lot of them that move around. They don't, they'll stay in the general vicinity, vicinity, but they're not just sitting there most of the time. They're moving around, especially if there's bait that comes to the area, they'll just take off. They'll just start following that, that bait around wherever. Um, so it's interesting because a lot of times you'll come to, before forward facing sold out, you'll come to spots that you've caught fish in the past, just assuming that the fish are there and they may not be there. They may be slid out. A lot of times these fish will suspend a lot. You see that a lot. How, how often fish spend is mind boggling. They spend a lot of time in just kind of like the middle of the water column doing whatever they do. But you're fishing an area that you've caught fish and you can't get bit. Well, you put the live scope down there and look around. Well, you're not getting bit because a lot of times the fish aren't there. They vacated the area and that doesn't mean they won't come back. That may be uh, an evening feeding spot or maybe a morning feeding spot. You're there midday, the fish are gone. Another thing that's super valuable about forward facing sonar is keeping track of the bait fish. You do your side scanning, you locate a big pod of bait fish. Del Colvin calls it the party. You find the party and you find the fish relating to it. These fish are moving around. The bait fish are moving around. They're getting pushed around by the bass and it's hard to stay on top of them if you don't have something looking at them. You can find them on the side scan. It's just a little bit slower process. Um, I've done that for years, but with forward facing sonar, when you lose those fish, when you lose those that bait, all you gotta do is just pan your head around, relocate them. Did they go to the right, the left? Did they move away from the boat? Did they get closer to the boat? That's something you can't really tell with down scan or side scan. But with that forward facing sonar, you can reach out there. Say you're fishing at 80 foot, your depth, your forward range is 80 foot. All you do is pump that up to like 120, 140. You're not looking so much for detail, you're just looking for those little blobs and you pan it around, you find that bait, move closer to that bait and you stay in the fish. Another thing that's super beneficial about forward facing sonar is identifying what you're actually looking at. We're gonna idle over a brush pile. There's a brush pile down there, dot number 365. That's a little piece of brush. We're gonna idle over it, see what it looks like on the side scan and then drop the forward facing sonar down there. And you can really tell how tall the brush pile is or the piece of cover you're looking at, how wide it is. You can tell what's going on in there. If it's just void, there's nothing in there. Or if there's bait in there, you know, bluegill, crappie, bass, if the brush pile is alive. That's something that's a little bit harder to tell on side scan. I mean, you can do it if it's really obvious. And a lot of times you have to hit it just right to get that information. But when you find a piece of cover and it looks like it could be holding some fish, you drop the live scope down there and you can tell right away. So let's go scan that. And hey, we're coming up on dot number 265. It's gonna be the side of her screen. Should be a little brush pile there. Unless somebody moved it. People move stuff around on this lake. Let's see what we got going on down there. Okay, there we go. There's your pile right here. It comes out this way. It sits up off the bottom quite a bit. It's a pretty tall little pile. You can see it on the down scan right there. So there's information in there. I mean, you can you can see a couple little specks down there. Um, see if I can zoom this in a little bit. You know, you can see that there's there's some potential down there, but you really can't tell exactly what's going on. So now I'm going to spin back around and we're going to drop the forward facing sonar down there and have a look see. All right, walking up to the front of the boat here. Here's that 265 waypoint on my front graph. You notice the head of the trolling motor is pointing that way. The boat is pointing like this. 
the trolling motor is actually pointing towards that waypoint. And there it is right there. Pan around. There's your brush. Now, there are a few fish in there. You can see these harder returns. We're coming up on it kind of fast. I'm gonna back off just a hair. So there you go. That's actually a DNR spike. It's one of those porcupine spikes. That's what it looks like to me. Um, you can see how it's got the little sea urgent kind of look. And then here's your brush. There's definitely crappie down in there. You can see some bait fish or some crappie kind of ling that's crappie probably lingering around here, but right here, see? There's fish down there. Let me zoom in on that just a little bit and get a better look at it. Okay, so we've got our range at 40. And now you can really see that brush down there. See that hard stuff? And then we're gonna just kind of ease around here and get a little bit better look. There's a lot of brush down there. There you go, that's a good picture right there. And there's a fish right there. There's a couple crappie down there. It's not loaded up by any means, but that's what this is about. You can scan it, if you find something, um, just going off of the side scan, you almost have to fish it. Sometimes it's obvious, you'll see the little dots if it's a, you know, a point or a bar or something, but put your waypoint on there and you can jump up here and have a look and see if it's worth fishing, you know? I mean, that's sometime during the day, there's gonna be some fish in that, or sometime during the week, there's gonna be some fish in that. And there is some fish in that, it's just not loaded up. And then, so we're still 40 feet away. Um, so we'll get right up on it, and then you can really crop this screen in and look at it even closer. So we've got our Ford ring at 20 now. And there's that fish that we saw a while ago. That's that porcupine. There's some hard returns down in there. So there's there's a few fish down in there. I, I mean, I really wouldn't fish this. I'm not seeing enough to make me want to stop. Let's see some fish swimming around in there. That's another thing that's really cool about the forward facing sonar is scanning, finding something, dropping that trolling motor, having a look in there, see if it's worth fishing. You know, another thing you can tell is how much action are you imparting in your bait with the rod? And that's a pretty, that bait's jumping up there probably 10 feet off the bottom or something like that. Well, I'm stroking it pretty good. And that's about what I would expect. But a lot of times you're moving the bait a lot further than what you realize you're moving it. There's your suspended fish. You see that a lot. You see fish just kind of cruising around, suspended. Kind of want to make a cast with his underspin. He's got a little group of fish out there just to see how they respond. So it's kind of important to get it above the fish. And I know this isn't really about catching the fish, but you can see that underspin falling. So that was about a perfect cast. Fish are out there about 55 to 60, and I'm just gonna start my retrieve, a slow roll, and see if anything reacts to the fish or to the bait. They're just kind of letting it go by. We've got some more that showed up right underneath the boat. That's something else you'll see a lot, is how many fish gravitate to the boat. It's really amazing. So right here, we've got some brush right here. And I want to throw this underspin out and I want to be able to reel it right over the top of that brush to see if anything comes out. And it's so hard to do. You can you can do that without this technology. You just count it down, but it is nice to, to actually be able to see what your bait is doing as it's falling and how far down it is in the water column and how close it is to that cover. So we just made a cast out there with the underspin. I'm going to try to find that underspin. Once we locate that underspin, we're going to start reeling it in, see if we can get it right over the top of that stuff. So there's my understand. I lost it and it actually sunk down into that stuff and I felt it bump it. So I'll make another cast. The wind's kind of blowing around here. Let's make another cast, see if we can get it all lined up like we need to to see it properly work. We want it to land right in that cone and there it is falling right there. So that's my underspin. So I want to start that retrieve, try to keep it right over the top of that brush as close as I can. And we're coming right over like we need to. There's the underspin. No, nothing Nothing came out and looked at it. And we only need to make a few casts to see if there's anything in there. It didn't really see much in there. There's a few fish in there. But obviously they're not feeding, so we don't need to waste much, much time on that. But you can pinpoint your cast. So let's pick up a jig and make that same cast. Drop it right in the middle of that brush pile. There's our jig falling right there. So we're a little bit short on that cast. 
but we know that we're short. We don't have to keep dragging it to feel that we didn't land in it without, you know, these eyes under the water, without the forward facing sonar. We don't know exactly where we cast it. We know we're close, but we don't know. So now we can just reel it in and make another cast. I'm gonna cast a little bit further. I went well past it. See if we can pick up that jig as it's falling. There's the jig falling right there. So we're right in that brush pile. I just landed on the back side of that brush pile. We're right here. So as soon as I pull up, I'm gonna feel the wood, which I'm feeling right now. So we're right in that brush pile. There's no guessing. We know that we're in it. I mean, I can feel it right now. We're right in the middle of the heart of it. So instantly, we're right in the juice. There's no really dragging around, feeling for it. It's also amazing to see what's going on in the water and the bait fish, game fish relationship. Watching stripers, bass, you know, largemouth, smallmouth spots, crappie chase the shad around. It's amazing the stuff that you see going on under there. It's, it, it's all been, most of it has just been what we assume and we really haven't been able to see it, but you can see that stuff going on. It's, see some pretty pretty unique stuff you see how the bass will herd the shad they come up from the bottom they're coming from the side sometimes they kind of hover around the top until they're ready to feed then they go into the big ball of shad and um, all hell breaks loose you see sometimes where a fish just appears in the middle of a ball of shad and the shad just kind of like spread out and there's this eye with a big fish sitting in the middle of it and he's just it's a buffet so you see all that that to me that's really special to to get a um an inside camera look at the fish doing their natural thing another thing that's really useful with this forward facing sonar technology is finding edges grass edges this lake's full of grass and the fish use the grass like they do in every lake that has grass but it's hard to cast right now we're fishing a jerk bait you know it's winter time we're throwing a jerk bait you can see some of the dead grass up top, but how far out does that grass grow? We can turn the head around on the trolling motor and you can take a look. You can see the grass right there. So your grass is stopping in about 10 foot. It's a little bit sparse right in this area and it gets gradually thicker right here. So if your fish are kind of hanging out in this sparser stuff, you know where that's at. If they're hanging right out of the thick grass edge, you know where that's at. You're not throwing your treble hook bait up into this stuff and getting it hung up. You're able to just work the outside of that. A lot of times you're paralleling the grass so you can get in tight to the grass and you can pan the head of the trolling motor around and you can see right where you want to throw. You don't kind of want to throw in this. These fish are going to be sitting down in this area and as you jerk your jerk bait over the top, they're going to come back up. Let's make a few casts and I'll show you what I'm talking about. jerkbait right here popping it right through that grass and I'm well off that grass line so I know I'm not going to be getting hung up but I am close enough to the tops of that grass that if fish is interested in this they're still going to be able to come up so I'm fishing that really focusing on that edge there okay I'm kind of parallel to this grass line the grass is running this way right here and I can't I mean you can see where it stops on the surface but it's still coming out a little bit. So as I pull this trolling motor head around, turn it around, I can actually, right there, see how it gets really, really thick? So you can kind of get a good idea of how far out that grass is growing underneath the water and uh, keep you from getting your jerkbait boggled down too much. It's not a bad thing to get it in the grass, but it can be aggravating. Anything with treble hooks around grass usually doesn't do good. So you want to be fishing next to the grass, but it's nice to not have to throw up in the grass and keep cleaning your bait off. And you can see, I make this cast out there, get this jerk bait down a little bit. So there's my jerk bait right here. I can let that thing just kind of sit. And I know I got grass coming up right there. There's a couple clumps of grass. It's sinking really slow. So I can pop it up. I'm coming up to some grass now. I can let it just kind of sit. There may be a fish sitting next to that grass stalk, or that grass clump. And there it is. See, I'm right on the bottom. I know exactly where my jerk bait is at at all times. 
Another thing that's super useful with Ford Face Sonar is locating the drops. You know, a lot of times we scan an area, we find some fish sitting on the top of a drop, we find a piece of cover sitting at the top of a drop, and we can really pinpoint the top of that drop. Say we just want to fish the actual drop, we don't want to fish the flat on top of it, we want to fish right where it rolls off. We can put that trolling motor down, scan around, and we can drop our bait anywhere we want. So we're always fishing the most productive water at any given time. I'm using the four phases sonar most of the time just to locate cover. A lot of times, I mean, I'm a, I'm a shallow water fisherman at heart. I do like to fish out deep, but like most of us, we started our fishing passion, fishing from the bank and fishing creeks and we gravitate towards the bank even when when we're in a boat so it, i'm shallow water at heart i've learned to fish offshore a little bit more but as i'm fishing down the bank shallow i'm still panning around a lot of times you'll use that forward facing sonar to locate a stump or something that's 80 feet in front of you that you didn't know was there or as you're coming up on a waypoint it's good to have that to kind of spin around have a look in that brush pile to see if there's any fish relating to it if they are you can make a few casts at them if not you can just keep on moving so it's not so much about actually catching fish that you're seeing it's really to me the biggest advantage um at least in the southern part of the country now up north they do you know it is deadly on smallmouth and just sitting there picking them off and really that works everywhere if you've got those fish out there suspended but most of the time i'm using it to locate cover um, and, and look in, and look into brush, into laydowns, grass, things like that. That's that's the biggest advantage for me personally is to be able to look into that cover and to find new cover as I'm fishing down the bank. I'm always panning around looking for stuff. I can't tell you how many new waypoints I have just because I've spun that trolling motor around, put that um, four facing sonar out there about 100 feet and just picked up new pieces of cover. You know, it's something to do. I do it a lot when the fish aren't biting, when the fish is tough. You can always get out here and locate some key pieces of cover and you can just check them periodically you know over the next couple months just keep kind of looking at them and seeing if you know if it's a place that they use during the pre-spawn if it's a post-spawn place um a summer deal a winter deal it's just nice to get that um just to find new cover just to find new things to fish so that's all i got for you i appreciate you guys checking out this video um as always please subscribe to the channel it's a great way to support the channel and any feedback in the comment section you know if you'd like me to talk more about something if you've learned something if i messed something up or didn't convey it properly um let me know i'm always out here trying to produce content and keep you guys interested and, and keep it fresh new and worth your time thumbs up till next time